skies, Joel here from Astro Photos. So it looks like it might be clear skies tonight. Uh, the forecast is from sort of 10 o'clock onwards. Uh, the clouds look like they're going to disperse a bit and uh, we might have a window of clear skies until the morning, uh, early hours. The target that I'm going to be imaging tonight is a new one. Uh, I've not imaged it before, so I'm quite looking forward to it. It's always exciting to um, start imaging a new project, one that you've never you know, started imaging before. Um, and this one is the Triangulum Galaxy. Um, it'll fill the frame quite nicely, even at 430 millimeters with an APS-C uh, sensor. So, you know, 22 by 15. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, with it being a galaxy as well, it's more suitable uh, for the camera that I've got which is the Canon 80D and it's not modified, so better for galaxies. Although having said that, this uh, galaxy has got quite a few sort of high regions in it. Um, so, you know, one, it, it would be nice to have a modified camera to pick up that hydrogen alpha. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, um, should be able to get a nice image. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So I bought this book about a month ago. Um, it's really good. Uh, it's by a guy called Ruben Kier. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, the 100 Best Astrophotography Targets. So it gives you uh, a detailed insight into uh, which targets to image uh, on a particular month of the year. And um, yeah, you know, you can use it as a guide. You don't have to sort of stick to it, but it gives you some useful tips. And uh, you can see what's uh, what's about in the sky, uh, you know, in the northern hemisphere, for uh, when you're imaging. The Triangulum Galaxy is actually in November in this book. It's on page two hundred and seventy-seven. So you can see here it's. Uh, Got some details about the galaxy. Um, it's uh, also known as M33, uh, floats 2.3 million light years away, the same distance as the Andromeda galaxy, uh, with a diameter of 50,000 light years. Um, it's only a third of the Andromeda galaxy, so it appears smaller through binoculars and telescopes. And it also gives you a bit of uh, info about imaging, um, but that's mainly to do with dedicated astro cameras. So I sort of skip that bit and the processing as well. Uh, and what it looks like in here, black and white, mono, uh, is this. So it fills the frame of this particular telescope and camera quite nicely. And it won't be too dissimilar to the sort of field of view that I'll be getting with the Zenith Star 73 and my Canon 80D. So yeah, that's the target that I'm going to hopefully image tonight if the clouds uh, disperse a bit. <laughs> right, so um, we'll have a quick look in Stellarium and see what it looks like. So we'll just go to search, type in M33, and it'll take us to it. And you can see Right now, the altitude is 36 degrees, so it's quite high up. It's definitely, um, you know, when, it, when it's above anything above sort of 25 degrees, but the higher the better, that's when you can really start imaging uh, deep sky objects. And, uh, you know, you're not sort of imaging through a lot of that sky fog um, near the horizon. So it looks quite high up in the sky. Uh, it's not sort of near the zenith or anything, but as the night goes on, uh, it'll start going higher and higher into the sky, which is always good. So if we zoom in, we can see what it looks like, Constellarium. And you can see the spiral arms here, uh, just extending out, and they extend out quite a way. And obviously, um, imaging with sort of, you know, five minute exposures might be quite suitable for, for this target to, to try and get some of that faint nebulosity uh, and those faint spiral arms to, to show up in the image and the, 
in the final stack. So yeah, looking forward to it. So you can see here, uh, I've got Team Viewer running on my laptop outside, uh, connected to the mount, and uh, I'm controlling it from my desktop computer. Uh, so it's it's really good. Obviously, you don't have to stay outside in the cold and damp. Uh, you can be inside uh, in the warmth, having a nice glass of uh, red wine. <laughs> for all my efforts uh, setting up tonight. And you can see the uh, subs that are coming in. So I've got 15 so far, uh, 180 seconds, ISO 400. Thought I'd try ISO 400 just to see if it makes a bit of, bit of a difference to ISO 200. Because there's nothing really to say that one or the other is the better one to shoot at. I've always shot at ISO 200. But I think that the quality of the noise can improve a little bit if you sometimes increase the ISO. So I'm on 400 tonight. Uh, it's quite cold out, 16 degrees Celsius. So we're getting into the uh, sort of winter season now, which is good because it helps with the cooling. You know, things might be a bit damp and wet outside, but uh, some nights, but um, definitely the colder temperatures are better than in the summer when you're you know, you've got 25, 30 degrees Celsius uh, ambient sometimes on hot nights anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can see the uh, quality of the subs that are coming in. If I double click on the image, you'll be able to, we'll, you know, we'll be able to see uh, what the stars are like as well. So they look quite nice and round. Um, I'm focused properly. And you can see, in a, even in a 180 second sub, you can make out some of some detail of the galaxy there. So that's just one image, one, 100, one three minute image. So that's uh, why, you know, we stack hundreds of them on top of each other to cancel out that noise and increase the signal to noise ratio. Um, and that's what contributes to the final image. Hopefully I'll get some, some subs that are worth keeping and they'll go into the final integration. <laughs> <laughs>